Hi, my name is Donnie Nichols, and welcome to Writing for Hollywood, the act of breaking in. Now, I don't know most of you, but I want to thank you for joining me here today, and for joining us at the 66th Annual Academy Awards. You know, ever since I've been a little kid, I've been watching TV and movies just like the rest of you. But there's always been this little voice inside my head that keeps saying, I can write this stuff. But you know what? It's not writing, it's the hard part. The hard part is breaking in. In fact, sometimes it's hard just getting your material read. Well, that being the case, I want to take you on a journey. I want you to come with me and meet the people who have broken in. We'll talk a little bit about screenwriting, the things that you should know, and then we'll meet the people who are making it happen, the people who can help you break into Hollywood. So sit back, relax, and don't go to sleep. Hello, my name is Francesca Fanti, and I'm an actress here in Los Angeles. And together with Dani, I would like to join you in this journey to meet some of the most dynamic movers and shakers in the film and television industries. Every year, the Writers Guild of America sponsors an awards ceremony to honor those who have contributed an outstanding work from the year before. We would like to start out by taking you to the Beverly Hills Hilton and it gives me great honor to introduce you to the 1993 Academy Award winning screenwriter for Schindler's List, Steven Zalian. Okay, I'll, uh, hi, my name is Steve Zalian and uh, I've been asked to uh, uh, give you some advice about breaking into the screenwriting um, field. Um, I have only one piece of advice, and, and that is to write what you uh, care about and to not try to second guess what other people want to see because I think that uh, if you do that, it'll be obvious and, and, and the only thing worth writing about are those things that you care deeply about. You in the first row, wake up. Uh, my name is Stephen Bochco. Um, I'm a writer and a producer. Um, I'm currently uh, producing NYPD Blue and uh, a, sh a new show on ABC called Birds of Paradise. Um, I have been in television for 25 years and I studied writing in college, Carnegie Tech, now Carnegie Mellon. Um, and. I was a very fortunate young man in college because I sort of conned my way into a, a, a summer job with Sam Goldwyn Jr., who uh, had come to visit Carnegie Tech promoting a movie of his, and he was addressing a group of us theater students in a small little theater. And I was sitting in the front row, and I, uh, I asked him a question. I, I said, Mr. Goldwyn, why is it that uh, you know, Hollywood doesn't produce more original material. Uh, it seems that all the movies are from books and, and existing plays. And he said, well, we would do it if we got more original material. We just don't get it very often. And I had an envelope under my arm, and I handed it to him. And I said, here, take this. And he wouldn't. And he hemmed and he hawed, and he said, oh, gosh, you know, it's, uh, you know, we can't do it without a release from an agent. And anyway, you know, he sort of slid by it and, and, and went on with the, uh, with the class. And fortunately, he didn't take the envelope because there was nothing in it. But uh, when I came to Los Angeles some months later for the summer, I called him and he remembered me and he gave me a summer job. And that summer job turned into a nine-month position with his company uh, and I, I took a leave of absence from school because I thought it would be a very good opportunity to learn something about life outside of, of, of college. And then I got restless and I went back to college uh, and I had a writing fellowship from uh, MCA, Universal Studios. 
And I used that fellowship uh, to wangle myself a summer job at Universal the next year. And they invited me to come back and work there when I graduated. And this was in the summer of 1966. And I actually have, have sort of been continuous, continuously employed ever since, which is a, a very rare and fortunate occurrence for somebody who is a writer. I spent 12 years at Universal. Uh, and then I spent another seven years at uh, MTM. And I've been at 20th Century Fox since 1985, under contract to them for three or four years, and, and from that point on with my own company. And that's the story of my life, and I'm here tonight uh, happily to receive a Career Achievement Award called the Patty Chayefsky Laurel Award for television. And uh, there's the five-minute story of my life. The thing that I always advise young writers is to keep writing, no matter what, but to also be very uh, serious about developing other skills and crafts within the industry because the truth is that no matter how talented you are as a writer probably the single most important element of being a working professional writer is miles experience age and generally you don't have that at the age of 21 or 22 when you're coming out of school uh, so probably more than other crafts in our in our industry writing is a really long-term commitment uh, and it's really tough to shortcut it. It, it 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 requires growth and time and maturity and and the key is to continue to write and develop your craft through that period of time so that as you get into your late twenties and 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 into your early thirties you have uh, a skill level that now begins to match your experience level so that you can begin to really write the sort of complex uh, things that, that, at least from my point of view, constitute, uh, you know, serious writing. Hi, my name is Bob Isley. Uh, I'm nominated tonight at the Writers Guild Awards for Best Original Drama for Television. I wrote something called Last Light, which was on Showtime, which was a death row piece starring Kiefer Sutherland and Forrest Whitaker. Uh, I also was supervising producer of The Equalizer, a television series, story editor of Crime Story, a uh, Humanitas award-winning writer for Cagney and Lacey that I wrote, and uh, I also wrote a uh, co-author co of Birds 2, the movie that's on Showtime, and Vanishing Sun. I wrote three uh, movies for the Vanishing Sun series of movies. Um, essentially, what I think a young person should do, or a new writer of any age, to, to break in is, first of all, to do the good work to spend the time in school, or even if you're not in school, becoming a student of screenwriting. Read screenplays. It is a literary form, first and foremost. Then I would suggest, after you've written a good script, uh, to send a query letter to agents uh, as to whether they would want to represent you. And you can get a list of agents from the Writers Guild of America West, which is in, uh, I believe it's in Beverly Hills, California. It might be in Los Angeles. Uh, it should be in your directory. I don't have the, I have the phone number, 310-550-1000. Ask for a list of agents. They don't franchise agents, but the agents that they have listed are wise enough to have signed the minimum basic agreement between writers and agents, which means they're not fly-by-nights and they're not trying to mess with you. Um, then you, you send a query letter asking if they would want to read your work and tell them you're willing to sign any kind of release form that they would require. It sounds like they're going to rip you off, but they don't. It's essentially to protect themselves. Then, if they, they, they will sound professional, by the way, if you do that. Then you send uh, a copy of your script in nicely Xerox. Make sure it's done with proper screenplay format. Uh, and I would suggest you send to more, more than one agent at a time, because agents are your key to Hollywood. Uh, but that's the business stuff. Um, one other business thing is to, I do recommend that you um, register your work with either the Writers Guild of America or send it to the Copyright Office and copyright it so you are protected. Uh, finally, 
I just want to reiterate that doing the good work is important. I wouldn't mail a screenplay if I didn't think it was the best I think I'll ever do for a number of years. Because you don't want to close doors. And it's okay to have a long apprenticeship. If it takes you many years to write what you consider a really good screenplay, better to start then than to send something that's half-baked too early. Uh, and how do you know if it's a good screenplay? Take the classes. Take extension courses at college or take college courses or writer's workshops. Don't just show it to your girlfriend or your wife or your husband or somebody that loves you who's a gentle reader. Show it to readers that are a little bit tougher. But in the final analysis, uh, don't lose heart. Uh, you've got to have what I call a permeable armor in order to succeed in this business. By that I mean it has to be able to let good criticism through. That's what I mean by permeable. But it has to be armor in that suppressive spirits or those that would tear you down, you have to keep that criticism out. Because there's a lot of people that want to say, no, you can't do this. When in reality, if you have the desire and you've got a, some of the talent, believe me, desire and perseverance mean an awful lot. Talent is a quotient and that's God given. You can't suddenly say, I have talent. But if you do have the talent, the only way you'll, you'll really develop it is to spend time at your craft and a lot of time at that. Uh, I, was, I taught junior college for 10 years before I started making a living as a writer. So that is also a good point. Don't quit your day job if you sell something. Um, it's real important to continue to work and to continue to, uh, to grow, but also to support yourself with a day job in the meantime. Hi, my name's Bruce Taylor. I'm a member of the Writers Guild and the Producers Guild and over the last 15 years have uh, either written or co-written or, or uh, rewritten uh, a little over 200 episodes of uh, half-hour situation comedies and one-hour shows that have appeared on network TV and in syndication. Uh, it's um, appropriate that uh, different strokes and Rona Martin's laughing are two of the big ones. Small Wonder was another one I helped co-create. Uh, appropriate that I'm talking to high school kids because I started when I was in high school. Believe it or not, I was, I was 17 and I started writing for Phyllis Diller uh, out of Burlingame, California, a suburb of San Francisco. I did that, uh, uh, strangely enough, by seeing her being interviewed on a local TV uh, show in San Francisco talking about her appearance at the Fairmont Hotel. And she happened to mention uh, in that interview that she had uh, writers all over the country, housewives and, and college students and blah, blah, blah. So I'd never written anything in my life. I was just a high school punk. And I sat down and wrote a page of jokes about how she met Fang, her husband. And I drove them up to San Francisco. It was about a 17-mile drive. And I, and I couldn't find Phyllis herself at the Fairmont Hotel, but I found her secretary. And I gave her an envelope with, with the, uh, the jokes in it. And about three weeks later, I got a, a, a note from Phyllis Diller and a check for $45. She bought nine jokes, five bucks a piece. That's all she paid. It doesn't matter whether you were a writer for 30 years or a writer for 30 minutes. That's all she paid. But it started my career and gave me a lot of confidence, obviously. I, I'd never written anything before. So through that um, uh, writing experience, I ended up working on a small uh, TV station in San Francisco where we interviewed celebrities and uh, met an awful lot of people. Jimmy Durante became a friend of mine uh, through correspondence. And when I first snuck down to Beverly Hills, I looked him up and he had me over for lunch. Um, I also climbed over the fence at NBC to, to, to get into the uh, studio because I couldn't get in any, any other way. And I ran into a fellow who was in publicity uh, who had handled Jimmy Durante uh, in the interview we did in San Francisco. So uh, I said I was looking for a job, and he mentioned that a friend of her, his, Woody Frazier, was starting a new show called The Della Reese Show, which was a variety show, and they were looking for writers. And that, that was my first job. I sold my car for $600 and, and moved uh, from San Francisco to Hollywood and have been here since 1969. Uh, as far as advice is concerned, um, I interviewed Rod Serling once uh, for a show that he was appearing on, that I was working on too, and he said, never throw away anything. He said, that's where Twilight Zone came from. After I did Requiem for a Heavyweight, I pulled that out of the drawer. I'd written it 20 years before. So a good idea is a good idea. You may not be in a great position to sell it today, but if, if it's a good idea, it's a good idea now, and it'll be a good idea five years from now when you are ready. Thank you.